Hi everyone. Today we're going to quickly go over how to replace a broken screen on an HP Chromebook 11 G8 Education Edition. Uh, starting off, the first tools that you're going to need is either a screwdriver or a power screwdriver. You are definitely going to need a pair of tweezers for part of this. The fine point are definitely the best. And you're going to need some kind of pry tool to get the clamshell case on the Chromebook open. One thing that you need to be mindful of, these two top screws that go through the hinge section are longer, so please make sure that the long screws end up going back through the hinge section. If you put them in down at the bottom, they'll end up breaking through the front of your Chromebook case, and you don't want that to happen. With your Chromebook open, you're going to go around the outside edge with your pry tool and carefully pop up all of the tabs holding the clamshell case together, making sure that you find where the tabs are at so you don't end up cracking them off. If you just grab this and pull, you're going to break all your tabs and then you won't be able to get the Chromebook back together very securely. And when you lift up on this portion, please remember to be careful because your keyboard and touchpad connectors are under there. So if you pull up too quickly, you're going to end up breaking off those cables. And then you'll have another big problem to deal with. You'll be able to reach down in and undo these connections. You'll have to lift up on the tape here. Um, the new generations of the Chromebooks, they're taping these connections in place. And set the keyboard aside. An important next step is disconnecting the battery from the motherboard. Whenever you're replacing these screens, if you're fiddling around with the connector, it's best not to have the battery installed. Uh, that just prevents any type of static discharge from uh, ruining your brand new screen before you get the connector fully seated. So you're going to have to peel back this piece of tape like I just did, and you can use your pry tool and gently pull the battery connector away. And now your Chromebook is safe to work on. Next, you're going to have to remove the hinge cover. I found that just getting your pry tool in here um, and popping it loose a little bit tends to help. You might have to give it a little pull from the other side with it open. has a couple of tabs holding it together on each side. Once you get these inside ones done, you should be able to close the lid and remove it. And this tab should pull away. Set this part aside. Now, you must remove the bezel from around the screen. This part you have to be especially careful with because there is very sticky two-sided tape connecting the bezel to the screen and there's also tabs all the way around. If you mess up that tape or if you break the tabs, 
uh, the bezel is not going to go back together and the bezel is very fragile so if you don't do this part carefully you're going to end up with a broken screen bezel. So you want to carefully loosen up all these tabs. You want to make sure you spend a bit of time doing this part. There's a tab about every two inches, it seems like, on this. Now, with that done, carefully peel the tape away from the screen. trying to keep as much of the tape on the bezel as you can so it will re-adhere. The new screens do not come with any type of replacement tape. This bottom part you want to like run your finger in here to pop all this away. And you can set your bezel aside. With the screen laying flat on your workbench here, you'll find four screws holding the screen to the hinge assembly, uh, this metal bracket. You only need to undo these four hinges. Don't touch any of them along the top or the bottom. So it's just these four on the sides. If you're normally using an electric screwdriver, I'd recommend switching to a hand one at this time because they're very small screws. And you don't want to strip them out or lose them. They will take a little bit of downward force to get them to break loose. They seem to have some kind of Loctite adhesive on them. Now the screen connector is connected from the back. So you have to carefully lift this screen up and we're going to flip it over and gently undo the cable from the routing clips down here. So we have a little bit of working room. Our next step is going to be to carefully peel this tape back that's holding the screen connector on. You will have to reuse this tape, so don't destroy it while you are undoing it. You can just hold that back. There is a spring clip that it's difficult to see that holds the connector in place. This is the part where your tweezers are going to come in handy. And you'll have to use the tip of your very pointy tweezers and undo the spring clip. Make sure you keep this clip. Your replacement screen does not come with a replacement. So that's what that looks like, and that's what holds the connector together. Screen connectors are very easy to damage, so you're going to want to gently pop that screen connector off. And you can get your old screen out of the way. With our new screen sitting in place, I'm going to line up my connector. Make sure that you're giving yourself enough room to work where you're not pulling on any of these cords. You want this to line up straight. And make sure you guide it in evenly. If this connector doesn't get seated fully, you're going to have very jumpy video. Or no video at all. So make sure that it gets fully seated into the connector. 
Next you're going to take that spring clip and you're going to hook it back into one side of the connector. Getting this retaining spring back in is a little difficult. But you're going to hold down in the middle with one hand and you're going to loop that back into the little hole on the other side. There you go and you should see it fell into place there. I know it's a little difficult to see on the video. Um, and then I like when I replace these screen connectors, make sure you kind of pull that tape a little bit taut and stick it back down. From here, you can slip the screen back into place, making sure that you reroute your cable as you go. You don't want that cable to get pinched or anything while your screen is getting opened and closed or else you might lose video. There should be some little plastic tabs that your screen holds down onto. You can feel it kind of drop into place. Next we're going to replace our four screws, making sure everything lines up straight. We should be ready to get the bezel back in place. If your screen shipped with this protective cover on it, this is the time to peel off this protective cover because once the bezel's back in place, you won't be able to take that off because it'll be stuck underneath the screen bezel. When putting the screen bezel back in place, I like to start by lining up my top edges. I'm trying not to stick the um, two-sided tape quite down yet. I want to do that as I go because pulling on that two-sided tape can kind of mess up the screen. You know, I want to make sure that your bottoms are tucked in here. So don't go too far until you got that in place. And then you can start snapping everything back together. You just want to kind of make sure you feel around and make sure everything's clicked back in. Then after that, we should be able to plug the power cable back in and check and see if our screen's working. That looks like a good sign. From here, you can close the Chromebook and clip this hinge cover back into place. This part kind of always feels like you're doing something wrong, but It will seat back in there. And then from here, we just have to reconnect our keyboard and touchpad. I find it easiest to kind of line stuff up on how they will go. This part's going to be difficult to see, but we'll get the mouse connector under here. If the tape gets stuck back down that was holding it together, I'm just going to have to lift that back up. Get 
your wire for the touchpad. Back in. Make sure it gets fully seated in there before you close down on the connector. I'm going to try this again. This is a little bit difficult to get on camera. Normally I kind of do this in a different way, but you won't be able to see what I'm doing here if I do that. So I got the keyboard plugged back in. I got my touchpad plugged back in. My next step is always to restart the computer by holding down refresh and power. That way I can just make sure that the touchpad and keyboard are both working before I snap it all back together and put the screws in. So it looks like the touchpad is working. I'm going to test the keyboard. And the keyboard's working. So I can just quickly snap the computer back together making sure I work all of the clips back in. On the G8s, these ones up by the hinge are a little tricky to get to seat back together. I found that this piece of plastic up by the hinge has been a little bit flimsy, so you might have to persuade it back together. And then from there, we flip the Chromebook back over. Remember that your two long screws that you set separate from the other ones go up in the hinge part. Then the other four screws that are shorter go in the other four openings. Then we can just drive these screws home and we are all done replacing the screen on this Chromebook.